Welcome to another Jesse Coyle production. In this video, I'm going to be talking about this contraption here called a sauna tent and how it can improve your performance. So, in the second part of the video, I'll go into the protocol and how it's used and how it can benefit your cycling, but I'll just walk you through what it actually is first uh, before we get into that. So, it's basically a little tent with a little chair in it that you sit in. There's a little remote controller here that has a time and temperature settings. And then on the inside of it, there's four heating elements. So there's one on the left, one on the right. There's one behind the chair, little stool, and then there's one little heating element on your feet. So you basically sit in there, you zip it up right up to your neck and cook yourself. So I've done a quick uh, presentation on why I think you should sit in a sinky stauna tent and do your heat acclimation. So this is what we consider passive heat acclimation where you're not exercising in your heat exposure as opposed to active heat acclimation, which is things like exercising in a heat chamber that you might see some elite athletes do. So regular exposure to heat stimulus provides the following adaptations, some of which you might've heard of. So a decrease in your sub-maximal heart rate when you're exercising, a decrease in your internal core temperature, an increased sweat rate, so the amount of sweat you're producing, and also a faster onset of sweating when you start exercising. And also, interestingly, a decrease in the electrolyte concentration in your sweat, so you're not losing as much salt and as much electrolytes when you're exercising. You'll also see an increase in plasma volume in your blood, and also perceptual changes, so things like lower effort level when you're exercising in the heat, which are probably a big contributor to you know, performance improvements as well. So there's a big proven increase in performance uh, in the heat after doing a heat acclimation bout, which I'll get into a bit later. But I also think there are some really big gains, actually not big gains, there are still some gains to be to be gained at exercising in regular temperatures. So between sort of 15 and 23 degrees. Bit of history, how you used to have to do heat acclimation, it was only really available to elite athletes that could get into an institute of sport that had a sauna. Or you could you know, join a local gym and use their sauna, but it wasn't really available to everyone. It was also difficult to implement because as I'll get to a bit later on, it's most effective when you have your heat exposures straight after exercise. And if you have to then finish a ride, drive to the gym to hop in the sauna, it doesn't work as well. And it's obviously also expensive and not too easy to implement. This is where the sauna tent comes in. So now we all have access to it. So I have seen some elite athletes using this. So in the Australian Olympic team, I've seen Al Donahue and also Maeve Plouffe using it. I got one story here. You can see her sitting in the sauna tent. So this is something that I think for Tokyo Olympics, pretty much all of the Australian Olympic team were using um, because I've seen two of them post about it and if two of them are using it, I'm pretty sure they'd all be using it. And it's also cheap. So I bought mine for $250 on eBay. So really accessible, uh, but don't get the steam version. There's, there's a version which I'll bring up now this one that has this little steam attachment which plugs in and pumps in steam, that's probably not gonna work because it's not gonna get hot enough. You need to get one that looks like this, which has the heating elements in that I showed you at the start of the video. So just to be aware if you, you do go shopping around for one of these. So that's a bit of background. So if you do happen to have one or if you're interested in getting into one, when would you use it in the season? Obviously, if you are got a race coming up in the heat, then it definitely makes sense. So using it for a specific heat acclimation block in the month leading up to a race in the heat. So proven massive benefit, like some research, which I'll link below, looking at like a 23% increase in time to exhaustion when performing in the heat, like massive. And you know, for, for, obviously as the temperature goes down, the amount of increase you're gonna get is gonna diminish. Um, and as a coach, it's really non-negotiable. If I have riders that are competing in really hot conditions, I. I pretty much force them to do some sort of heat acclimation. There's so much, so many gains to be had that if you don't do a heat acclimation protocol for a hot race, you're just not going to be in the mix. That's the obvious one. The less obvious one that doesn't have as much research, but I have found to be quite effective, is a small boost in performance in your preseason. So anecdotally, I found it to work. Um, so using it early in the build phase, so more than five weeks out from your when you want to be peaking, I I have found that it does provide just an extra boost to the aerobic stimulus of that sort of training you're already doing. So you want to do it before your training gets too intense. But I have found even if you're not racing in the heat, even if you're in that, as I said earlier, 15 to 23 degrees, I do think there is a benefit to be had by using the, the sauna tent. So then, all right, that's when you would use it. 
So how do you actually use it? It's most effective done straight after exercise. So I will go for a ride when I'm, when I'm in my block, go for a ride, come in the door, stay in kit and just hop straight in and, and turn it on. So I'll have my, my drinks made up, ready to go. I'll have my laptop there to, to, to watch a show and pass the time. And I'm in the door, in the kit, sit down, turn it on. And you know, there's maybe a minute in between finishing the ride and getting in it. Sit in there for 30 to 45 minutes of, of exposure and consecutive days you need. So this is something you need to, you should, you should really be trying to do every day. So at least for the first two weeks, try and do it every day. So 30 to 45 minutes every day, ideally after a ride. Now, if you're having a rest day, you're not riding on one day, it's fine to do it at another time of day. Or if you just run out of time and you need to do it at night, that's fine. But it is most effective straight after a ride. And then minimum exposure, you're looking at seven days for, for the minimum benefit. But really, you want to be doing it for, for for sort of for 21 exposures. So looking at sort of three weeks of doing it every day to get the the biggest uh, effect of it. And then also just be aware of your fluids and your electrolytes, because you you sit in there absolutely pissing with sweat, and obviously that needs to be replaced with electrolytes as well. So quickly, just to finish the video, I'll jump over to my calendar. I'll show you an example of sort of what that looked like for me when I did it earlier in the year in March. So you can see these little symbols on my calendar with the little medical symbol. These are where I logged my heat exposures. So it started on the 1st of March, 30 minutes post ride. The next day, 30 minutes uh, separate separate to the ride. That was a, I did the sauna in the morning, raced at night. And then you can see consecutive day, consecutive day. Didn't manage to do it here. Next day and, and so on there. So you can see I was getting in not consecutive days, so not perfect, but looking at five in the first week, four exposures the next week. Um, and then I went into sort of a maintenance period after those two weeks of doing one per week. Um, so that's sort of the minimum you would need. Ideally, I would be doing this every day for this three weeks. So that's about it. If you have any questions about the sauna tent or heat exposure, drop them in the comments below and I'll uh, get back to you and, and answer them.